This video has been supported by these lovely people you see before you. With the support I get from my Patreons, I can give you guys regular content and updates. It also helps me give back to you guys so I can afford to do giveaways and tutorials more often. So what are you waiting for? Go check me out on Patreon and from just $1 a month, you can support me and the channel and get some great rewards. Enjoy the video. Alrighty, g'day lads. Welcome to what is the first in a long line of tutorials of how to make an entire first suit from start to finish completely available to you guys. And I've been reading your comments and there is a lot of them on that video. It's clocked like half a million views at this point. Um, but I've been reading your comments and I've seen what you guys wanted me to go into more detail in and I've grown so much as a maker since that first video and it's my most popular video on my channel so I'm going to do what any smart YouTuber would do and capitalise the hell out of it. So, today we are going to start on ahead. We are just doing a generic canine today. Um, there are a few things I will go into more detail about so I'll stop the time lapse. I will bring you guys close and we will have an in-depth look at how to do those things. It does mean that the video might be a bit longer, but I'm going to try to compress it into as much, into as little time as I can. Alrighty, so I guess we should get started. So first of all, we're going to start by making the bucket head base. So to start off with, I take one or two inch foam and trace out a rectangle the length of the circumference of the customer's head and the width of the measurement from the top center of their head down their chin along the front of their face. In my case, it was about 23 inches by 12. I add a few extra inches on the edges of the foam as it will compress when bent and will decrease the internal circumference of the base. Cut the rectangle out of your foam using an electric knife or particularly big scissors if you're so inclined. I then split my two inch foam into a one inch sheet using my electric knife and slowly working my way down the middle. You can just use one inch foam instead. Then I grab my lycra fabric from the bottom of my massive fur tower. and remove all of the excess fur it has accumulated from being in storage. I then trace the shape of the balaclava in white crayon and take it to the sewing machine. I sew around it with a straight stitch. Now, it's worth mentioning anything I machine sew in this video can be hand sewn if you don't have a machine. I have a hand sewing and machine sewing tutorial on my channel, so be sure to check it out. I trim around the excess fabric and start work on the base. Now, this is Steve Oak. He is an Ed Head from Monster Makers. I use this now. I still have this old head thing. I can use it, but I much prefer to use this armature because it is to scale. This is a 24 inch head and the person I'm making this for, he's got glue all over him, is um, 23 inches, but that, will, that is completely okay. It'll just mean that it will stretch a little bit and it'll all fit when I start taking out the back. We'll see you later. Steve out the front row. But anyway, just letting you know what this is. You can get it from Monster Makers. I think they ship worldwide. But yeah, I've got those Steve. By first marking the center on the foam rectangle, putting it up to my face and marking where the eyes, nose, lips, and chin are, and cutting out two circles for the eyes and a triangle for the around the rest of the dots. I then cut these out. I put my balaclava on the mannequin with the seam side out and glue my foam on so that the eye holes line up with the eyes on the mannequin and so does the rest. Then I work my way around the sides of the foam with glue until I reach the back. I then take the base off the mannequin and fill the last seam with glue and hold it flat till it dries, which can take a while. So one of the things you guys said you were struggling with was closing the top of the bucket head base. So we've got my camera as high as it will go and as close as it will go so you guys can see all of it happening. So first of all, got my glue gun. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the front and the back bits together in the middle. So I start by effectively emptying my glue gun into the top. Let's get another stick. Get another stick going. Get another stick. Stick it in there. There we go. So you can't see because I can't get my camera literally any higher than this. 
but I see the tippet. But you guys can see that there's a bit of whole bunch of glue in the middle, and I'm gonna take both ends and I'm gonna push them together like that. Like that. I'm gonna hold that there, wait for it to dry. All right, so the next bit is, now that we've gotten these two bits kind of in the middle, we're gonna take one side and bring it to the center by putting a whole bunch of glue in here. Let me check that that is still framed. It is framed, great. Um, so we're gonna take this bit to here by putting a whole bunch of glue in this hole. The glue gun, which needs a clean. So let's just fill that on up with glue. And I usually do the other side as well at the same time because then I can just hold it with two hands. This kind of makes it a bit easier. So let's just draw. Okay. Now, grab this, push it in, and sit here for half an hour waiting for it to dry. Such riveting content, guys. This is what you wanted. This is this is what this is this is what you asked for. So enjoy some riveting drying content. Ho ho ho. So We've got our little flower happening thing happening here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it down. I didn't like to pinch the bottom so you can kind of see there's a line here that you're supposed to cut along. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna push real hard with our scissors. We're just gonna bring it all the way to the top like that. And then we have that bit. So we're gonna do that to all of the corners. Come in, press really hard. And just get that chunk off. Like that, yeah. Perfect, all right. Our last two. Ah, oh, there we go. The last one. All right. So you see now that we've done all those four, you could be lazy and leave it like that, but we're not going to do that today. We're not going to do that today. We are going to um, get our glue gun. Just gonna wipe the little drag off. We're going to get our glue gun. And we're going to put some glue on the inside. I just kind of vaguely aim it. I like to put just a little bit of glue on the outside as well. Now, because I obviously don't want to be touching that glue, I will often grab a pair of So my camera cut out, so I'll just quickly explain. You just put glue in the seams you made and hold them closed till they dry. Just be careful not to burn your fingers. I now draft the muzzle shape by putting some paper folded in half side on and drawing what I want the side view of the muzzle to look like. I then cut this out and unfold to get the muzzle shape, which I then cut out of one inch foam, test the fit on inside the head, inside the little triangle hole and adjust the shape. I cut a small ridge down the middle of this piece and fill with glue. This will hold the piece at a nice angle for it to be in the head. Then apply glue to the back edge and glue into the head. I then cut two circles out of one inch foam to flesh out the muzzle, glue them on and carve to smooth. I then add a small triangular ridge piece. This will smooth out the transition into the nose. I carve the nose out of foam and glue it to the ridge and the muzzle piece. I then use the rest of my one inch foam to trace how long and wide I want my bottom jaw to be. I then cut the shape out of foam and carve to round the jaw and carve out the inside to create the inside of the mouth and glue onto the head. Draft the shape of your eyes and trace onto the head where you would like them to sit. Then draft the shape of your cheek piece using your eyes as a guide. Cut this out of your thicker foam and then add a round piece on top of that. Glue together and work on carving them down. You want the bits that connect to your muzzle to be the thinnest. Then glue to the face with a lot of hot glue. I switch hot glue guns here because I ran out of sticks for the bigger one. So my camera keeps cutting out because it's dumb, but um, 
I've cut out a brow piece just from one inch foam and this goes around where the eyes are. So to make it, what I've done is I've effectively gotten a piece of foam, put it on the head and then roughly traced around where I can guess the eyes are. The great thing about foam is you can always take it off later. I realized it didn't quite reach here so I've added a little bit more there, but that just gets glued on straight like that. I then glue the brow piece to the face and add small pieces to the cheeks to help smooth the transition between the cheeks and muzzle. I cut bean shapes for the eyebrows, glue them on and smooth them out into the head. Alrighty kitties, so one of the things that you guys said that you really wanted to see was how to shape the ears. Now I've come a long way since I have done that video. So I've also gotten better at how I do my ears. So I, what I was doing before is I was just making a triangle and kind of bending it around. The character we're making today is a wolf. So sorry I don't know the generic canine but I figured every, it's what people are most likely to make. But, but generally, I'll show you guys the shape. So when I start with the ear, I kind of like to go straight up and a little bit inwards. Like that. Now to bring it down, I actually might go a little bit higher just because I'm probably gonna have to cut that off a little bit lower. Then I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna bring it wide, wider than you think. Because you can always cut it off later. Bring that in a touch. So I reckon, yeah, that's about right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take where it is, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna come all the way back down. So you guys can see that. So I'm gonna lay back on my pen for a sec. So the reason why I've done this is because when this sits on the head, we want it to sit straight up. We don't want it to point sideways because when wolves are alert, their ears are straight up and they're pointed at you. So we're gonna cut this out and we're gonna see how it looks on the head. I trace the drafted pattern onto some high density foam. This will stop them sagging with time. I then cut this out and trim the edges to smooth. I then pin them onto the head and apply glue very liberally between them. Remove the pins. Cut a strip of fleece and glue around the base of the ear with a lot of glue. This will reinforce the seam and allow the ears to bounce back when pulled down. Got the eyes. Oh, all right. Oh, I'm, I'm back. Oh dear. Oh dear. All right. So my camera cut out, but it only records half an hour at a time and I'm working in hour segments. So I basically did the eyes. So what I've done with the fabric is I've cut it into like a cross. So we've got four little triangles and I've just pulled it through the head and popped a little bit of glue on it. So I'll redo one just to show you guys. So you can kind of see how that came in. I'm just gonna see if that is in the frame. It is not. Nick's got it. Thank you, mother, my dear this one here you got it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that bit we're gonna pop a whole bunch of glue on it being careful not to burn our fucking fingers off now we're gonna grab that and we're just gonna pull it out to the side of the eye and I like usually grab a pin in there and wait for it to dry and then now that's ready for the eyes it creates a more seamless finish you can of course take a bit of fleece and go around the inside as well, but I'll be doing that once I actually add the eyes in and start furring. I will also be doing that to the inside of the mouth, but that's a later job. If you've watched my first tutorial video, you'll know that I make my eyes out of foamies, usually. Now, I have come a long way since that video and I have discovered a brand new way of making eyes, but it's probably not one that most people can do, but I'm gonna show you guys anyway and I'll also show you the traditional method of making eyes. So. Let's go meet the man who's helping me make some new eyes. This is Kevin. He is a 
Flash Forge Inventor 2 Special Edition. It is a collab between Bilby 3D here in Australia and Flash Forge. He is currently printing me some sky shaped eyes out of white PLA filament. I generally, I've just got this for Christmas and I'm really excited to start putting it into my suits. Um, it, this print is going to take me about an hour and a half to do, so three hours in total per eye. I modeled these eyes in Fusion 360, exported it as an STL file and popped it into my flash print programming and sent it to the printer. And it should be done in a couple hours. So in the meantime, let's show you guys how to make the traditional eyes. To make traditional eyes, take your eye shape and trace onto foamies with a pin. This allows you to not have any pen marks on your eyes when you cut them out. Once traced, use scissors or a craft knife to cut them out. Cut out a long, even strip out of your white foamies, the depth you want your follow me eyes to be. Apply a small bit of glue to the eye base and lay the edge of your strip along it, working your way around the edge until you meet the start again. Trim to size and glue to the starting end. You have now made your eye. To start the coloured part of your eye, take some buckram fabric and trace the inside of your eye onto the fabric. Then trace where your pupils will go. Take some black acrylic paint and fill in your pupil. Mix some colour and paint your iris. I extend this past the base trace to avoid having white showing. I then take some white and add sparkles to the eye. I glue the buckram fabric to the back of the eye base so that the eyes line up properly and trim the excess. I also add loads of hot glue to the back to reinforce. I tested the fit and realised my eye holes were way too big, so I took some one centimetre thick foam and glued it to the inside. Position in the head and cement in using your glue gun around the edge of the eye, then trim excess foam. Now it's time to start taping. Cover the entire head in duct tape. Working in smallish pieces, cover the entire head leaving no holes. Draw on your markings, writing on the colour and length of each, then divide your head into sections, muzzle, brow, forehead, jowls, cheeks and bottom jaw. Mark on each section with a number, the colour and the direction your fur will be going. Grab some paper and cut out your pattern pieces. Then cut into the rounded pieces so they lay flat on the paper when you stick them to it. I have a more detailed tutorial on how to do this also on my channel. I'll link it in the suggestion above. Once you remove the piece, take a sharpie and trace on the head where it used to be, and write the number of the piece. This will allow you to easier sew it together when the time comes, and act as a point of reference for you.
Once all the pieces are cut off the head, cut them out of the paper and sort into colour and length groups, so black long, blue short, and so on. Now we are ready for fur. Trace them onto the fur. If you need to shave pieces for the shorter areas, trace all short pieces onto the fur and cut around all of them to keep aside to shave later as one piece. Be careful to note the fur direction and keep your pieces aligned the same way. Cut around the pieces that don't need shaving with a little bit of seam allowance if you're machine sewing and almost none if you're hand sewing. I will be machine sewing this head together so I leave a little bit of seam allowance for my machine. I take the big piece that needs shorter fur and shave it down using a size 10 blade, which I realized the blades weren't centered on, so I quickly take it apart and recenter. I brush it out every once in a while to help it shave even. I go over the shave job twice to get it as even as I can. Then cut the short pieces out as well as Minky for the nose. Now it's time to sew it all together. I start by sewing all of the blue fur together using blue thread. Using matching thread better helps hide your seams as well as give it an overall professional look and feel. I start by sewing the darts. This is where you would have cut into rounded bits to make them lay flat. Once I've sewn all of those closed, I sew all the blue pieces together. In this case, the muzzle, jowl and cheeks. Once they're sewn, I switch to a black thread to sew the rest together.
I glue the ears on by applying glue to the top of the ear and rolling them down, applying glue as I go. Then I start the shave job. I'm using a 7FC blade for this as it allows less risk of shaving to the backing. I work slowly and brush out the shave every so often to see where needs fixing. I also shave some by scissors like around the eyes where it needs to be extra short. Once I'm satisfied with the base shave, I go and sew closed any open seams I have left, namely around the ears, on the top of the head, one of the cheeks and the bottom jaw. I clean up the shave and move on to the eye outline. I make a draft by tracing around the original eye shape, then tracing a little bit inwards and a little bit outwards of the original. Then cut the loop out and fit on the eyes. Make adjustments and cut out another. I will be adding an eyelash because this character is a female. I apply glue where the fur meets the eye and place it on, taking care to make it even.
I trim around the eyes to make sure they are clearly visible from the front. I sew the tongue by drawing the shape onto some minky folded in half with fluffy sides together and sewing along the line. I trim the excess and turn it inside out. I then pin a bit of Velcro and sew it down the middle to create a tongue look and to attach the Velcro needed for the removable tongue. I have glued the other side of the Velcro into the mouth. I place a coin in the end to weigh it down and sew the top closed. Next you want to trim your balaclava fabric back and start sewing it to the base fur of the head, working in small stitches all the way around. Next we need to make the neck, so take your matching fur and measure half of the circumference of the base fur. This will be the length of each neck piece. I generally make the width about 9 inches at its largest and 4 inches at its shortest. You want the fur to go from the flat to the pointy edge. Now we make two of these, one for each colour and sew to the head. Sew it to the same place you were sewing your balaclava fabric to. I usually work from the centre of one piece, matching it with the centre of the lower jaw and work from there. Keep sewing until the base of the neck pieces are, sewing are sewn together and then sew the sides together. We're almost there. Now we have to draft the hair pattern. I draw a raindrop shape as well as a side view of what I want the hair to look like. I cut one of the base piece and two of the side pieces. I then shave down the base piece to allow for easier adhesion to the head. I sew in the rare earth magnet and then sew it all together. Then I turn it inside out, test the fit, and stuff it, and sew it closed. Alrighty, so Adi is done. She's looking very cute. She currently has a, a Velcro removable tongue. So that comes straight out, it can be posed however the owner might wish. Pop that back in. And she's also got magnetic hairstyles. Now these are made with neodymium, oh sorry, not neodymium, just rare earth magnets. And they just kind of come in like that. And they sit quite nicely, like they're quite 
firm if I shake her around, she's not going anywhere. So I can lay it in the front. As you saw, the head's fully aligned, she's got a lovely neck, all of that good stuff. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this little updated tutorial of mine with a little bit of narration on the side. Um, and yes, so tomorrow's job will be for me to do the tail. And surprise, surprise, we're doing an entire tutorial series on this bean right here. Because she's a full digi fursuit, we will be showing, I'll be showing you guys from basically start to finish, from head to tail, about how to make an entire fursuit, or at least how I do it. There will be a few disclaimers because I don't know everything, of course, and I'm always learning, so, but this is just how I make things right now. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial video, which will be her tail. So see you then.